dockage easily allows you to deploy your, con your, your Docker containers with your Compose files, like I've said, and your ENV files and have them saved for you so you can tinker with them later. One of the important things to do when we're using Docker uh, on Windows, especially when we have hypervisor, is to make sure that we've got our file sharing resources set up. So in Docker desktop, uh, at the top of the screen, you can see the gears icon, which are the settings. Go to the settings, go into resources, and then file sharing. And you want an area basically where we can put all our, our Docker stuff, our Docker containers, any binding mount points that we're going to have. And that just basically means where we persistently save data other than Docker volumes to the Windows hard drive. Now I've set up a directory where you can see here, C uses Keith documents, Docker stuff. So if we open up the Explorer and we go to documents, you'll see I've created a folder called Docker stuff. In that, I've created a folder with dockage uh, and that's there. Now, as you'll find out in a second, when we look at the run command, dockage also requires two other folders, if you will. Um, so if you go into dockage, I've also created app and opt. So if you create those uh, folders in those directories, that'll put us off on the best setting. And because in uh, the Docker settings, I've just created a share to documents Docker stuff that will allow us to share everything inside that. So all our containers and bind mount points that we have mounted to this area will work fine. Now, if I load up the uh, Notepad++, you will see I've got two sections to this area. I've created a Docker network command. This will create us a, a Docker network, uh, which we're going to call Dockage. The reason for that is because on Windows in the past, I've come across experiences where there have been IP conflicts because when you create a container and you load that container up, it can just be assigned a random IP address uh, on the same subnet and same uh, gateway as your uh, Docker. Um, in the past, I've had an IP conflict with a host IP and it just messes everything up. So I like to put all my containers on their own uh, Docker network. That doesn't stop us from interacting with them with a the host, but it does uh, kind of segregate it from creating those conflicts. Um, so to do that, the first step we're going to do in this guy basically is run the command in the command prompt, docker network create hyphen hyphen subnet. And I've just given it a random IP of 175 decimal one, decimal one, decimal two forward slash 24 for the subnet for the gateway 175111 for the gateway. And the last part on the end is dockage. And that is the network's name. You can literally just copy that, go over to the command prompt, paste that in, and I will have this um, below the video for you so you can very easily copy this over. Once it's in the command prompt, as you can see, just simply press enter. It'll take a few seconds and then that will create our Docker network. When that Docker network is created, we're going to go back to the Docker run command. The second part of this is, is, is the actual run command, uh, which starts off as docker run. You'll notice the carrots here, not the ones you eat, but the symbols. Um, these are modifications so the docker run command can run in a command prompt in a Windows environment um, because they may be uh, backslashes if they were for a Linux environment. Uh, the docker run command we have here is going to name the container the dockage container. It's going to go on our Docker network, uh, sorry, dockage network that we created up here. That's why that is there. We are uh, keeping with the IP address theme. Um, we've created an IP address for this container of 175.113. It's not really important, but it, just put it there. We don't need to really go into too much detail about it in this video. Um, but as you can see, 175.11 matches the first three segments of all the IP addresses at the top there. And then we put number three on the end. So you've got three, two, and one. Do you see how that works? The next is the port. Really important. Don't change anything on the right hand side of the colon. This is because this port number is the internal port number for the container. And that's been set by the developer. So never change that. 
However, you can change the exposed port to the host machine, in our case, the Windows machine, which Docker just created as 5032. But if you were already running something on that in your um, Docker container or on your host server, you could change that to anything else that was available and free. Then we've got our volumes, as we mentioned earlier on. We've put everything in the C users key documents Docker stuff. And then we've obviously got our dockage and then app or dockage and opt. Uh, and if I go back to the folders here, you'll see they're represented here. And we've made sure that they're in here. So you will have to edit this command, uh, this path. But again, like the port, don't change anything to the right hand side of the colon, just to the left, where we're basically saying to the container, this path leads to this folder in the container. So as you can see, that's what a bind mount is there, by the way. That's a Docker volume, but it's a it's a bind mount. It just means that instead of using the internal Docker uh, environment volumes, we're kind of mounting it to our Windows folders. So they're just easier to access. And then underneath that, we've got the docker sock uh, mount, um, which basically lets dockage start, stop the containers, deploy the, con the stacks, the compose files, things like that. And the last part of the run command there is basically the GitHub, the container name, and the version which we're going as uh, latest uh, because we want the latest version of dockage. So that's what that docker run command is. So as soon as you modify that with your uh, directories that you've put in here, just from Docker run, copy all the way to the bottom. As soon as you've copied um, that from Docker run all the way down to latest, we can go into the command prompt, paste that in there. Yes, we want to paste that in there. And then if it doesn't automatically, we'll just click enter. It's unable to find the image locally, as you can see. So it starts pulling that dockage image from GitHub, from the, um, sorry, from the Docker Hub. Uh, it pulls that down. And as soon as that's done, we can, it'll deploy into uh, Docker. So as you can see, that's now completed. So we can minimize these two apps and the folders. Uh, if we come back out of the settings and we just go to the normal containers uh, page in Docker Desktop, you will now see that Dockage container is running. You can see our ports that we selected from our run command. And, you know, as you can see, this is on my uh, Windows 11 test server. So this is a fully set up Dockage now. We can open your favorite browser. Um, I'm going to use Edge. It's not my favorite browser, but it certainly is one that I'm using for demonstration purposes. Uh, two ways of getting to this, you can either just type in local host colon 5032, which takes us straight to the setup page of Dockage, or instead of local host, you can put the machine's IP address. If you don't know what that is in the command prompt, you can do IP config. If we scroll up a little bit, you'll see my IP address here is 192.168.175.196. If we copy that, we can replace localhost with that IP address and it still comes up because that is the current host machine's IP address. Whatever's easiest for you. Uh, just to get started, let's put in a simple uh, username of test, a simple password, nothing that I'm going to use concrete. You're going to be putting something in more uh, tangible than this. Create your accounts and that gets us in. And this is Dockage. This is basically... For, for a noob, for a beginner, probably the best start to Docker because you, you can now do things a little bit more easier uh, in terms of deploying containers. Uh, top right, you've got this little drop down here which gives you access to scan the stacks folder, settings, go through here, look through these English, security, some basic things. Obviously, as this um, project develops, we're going to be getting a lot more uh, features, hopefully. Um, and I know the community's recommended quite a few features. You've got the console, um, which is within Docker, within this container. Um, and as you can see, where the directory is here, opt stacks. If we go back over here, you'll see in our documents folder, in our Docker stuff, dockage. This is where your stacks are going to be 
saved and I'll, and I'll demonstrate that for you now um, so and, uh, and then we'll go home and you can see what you've got active exited or inactive you can even convert docker run commands although I did try and convert a, a docker run windows command that didn't work but it does say so in, in the github that there are a few things that it's going to be moving on to windows wise later on however apart from that this this fully works on windows i've tested everything out in, in the, the basics anyway and it all comes together um to get started we're literally just going to hit the compose file it always gives you this just default nginx thing but this is basically where you would copy and paste your compose file um and there's a there's an example already set up here which is which is nginx um the best way to show you this basically is to just deploy it so if we deploy what's available as you can see it gives really informative information it is showing you that it's pulling that information down you didn't have to type any commands in um you could literally just copy and paste a, a compose file into that and do that and boom there you go you've got a nice terminal that shows you all the information going on in the background and this is what I mean when I say that it, it runs it so well you can edit that compose file anytime you want straight from here you can restart the container update the container just pulls the, the latest version of whatever you've selected in your compose file so if you have the latest tag that will just continuously pull that latest thing you can stop or you can stop and down um, and there we go but the important thing here also is that you can see the uh, status of these containers as you can see active nginx um, a really cool thing to point out here is if you go back into your documents uh, docker stuff dockage opt you can see nginx folder has now been created automatically by this container and that's where your env and compose files have been saved and the real cool difference with this compared to portainer is that if you were to, for example, uninstall and reinstall Dockage, you'd be able to pretty much take off from where you last left because you could use that drop down to scan that stacks folder and your stacks would immediately come back. Now in Portainer, it doesn't give you any more control of that anymore. So if you had to uh, reinstall Portainer or set it up from scratch again, you'd actually lose control over the, that stacks. And, if you're a beginner in self-hosting, you might not quite understand why that's a good feature. But trust me, as you as you learn, as you expand your, your self-hosting experience, um, you'll come to understand why that is a good thing. So overall, that's Dockage. This was my first YouTube video. Um, please leave me some constructive feedback. What you think I can do better, um, if I did anything great at all. Um, and maybe just give me some tips yourselves because at the end of the day you're the people watching this and you're the people going to be shaping this channel as it progresses. I really appreciate your time and I hope I've helped some of you. Thank you very much.